Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how we can configure SSH protocol on our Cisco devices like in this case we have a Cisco router uh, to provide secure access to, to manage the device. Uh, you wouldn't probably want to use uh, Telnet because it transmits the password, username and password in clear text. So SSH is a better option. So now let's see how we can configure SSH. I have the console of the device. So let's quickly log into it. And uh, to configure SSH, it's pretty simple. But before doing that, you need to uh, configure the domain name onto this device. So to do that, uh, type in IP domain name and ssaabc.com. Uh, and then to enable SSH server onto this router, type in crypto key to generate RSA this is the algorithm. There are two options available. One is RSA and the other is EC. I'm going to go with RSA and generate uh, modular size. This is the key length size that I'm going to use and 1024. Now once that is done, we see that keys have been generated. Private key will, uh, will be uh, held with the router and the public key will be handed over to us when we try to connect to the router. So once that uh, is done, uh, all we need to do is go into our BTY lines and uh, over here type in login local and also transport input as a such. So what we have configured is that we have made this router to accept SSH connections on our VT lines and we have also configured SSH server within the router. Now all that is left is to configure username and passwords uh, to manage the device. What we can do is go into AAA new model. For authentication purposes we are going to configure that and then AAA authentication login use default and use the local and then I'm going to type in username let's say test and password as uh, password also test let's say now all that is done let's come on to a terminal and from here I'm going to type in SSH the username, add sign, and the IP of the machine, which is 192.168.1.111. This is the IP address that I've configured on the Cisco device. Uh, press enter, and we see that we have been handed over this public key uh, that we configured over here. Private key is with the router itself, and we have been handed over the public key. So I accept yes, and it will give us the password. Password that we configured earlier was test and we are writing. Now this is all good uh, but the problem with this uh, password based approach is that again uh, your password is susceptible to brute force attacks. Uh, nowadays there are scripting languages and, with, and there, there is DDoS attack where we have number of machines uh, compromised by the hackers and then they try to brute force the uh, uh, target system. So a better approach, let me just get out of this prompt. So a better approach is that uh, instead of using username and password authentication based mechanism to access the routers, we use a uh, key pair based generation like just like we did in case of uh, SSH while we configured SSH on the router itself. Uh, what we are going to do is that we and, and, hand, and we will hand over the public key to access the uh, router. What we are going to do is that we are going to generate the pub, uh, key pair on our own machine. In this case, I'm, I'm using this uh, Linux machine. Uh, Linux, I, this is my primary of the system that I like to use, but I'm going to show you for Windows as well that how you can do that. So on the, on the host machine that we are going to use to access the router or the switches, uh, we'll configure, we'll generate the key pairs, public key and the private key. We'll, we'll hold on to the private key and we will hand over the public key to the router or the switch and then we will try to access it without giving in the password. 
So another benefit is that not only the NAS security, but also that if you have to manage a number of machines, uh, then uh, it would be prudent that you do not keep the same, in case of you are using password, you, you would not like to have the same password for let's say hundreds of machines or hundreds of routers or switches. You would like to change them, uh, change the combination, certain combination for certain number of devices. Uh, so again, uh, the problem is that you will have to then remember those password, user and password for all the machines. But if you use this key uh, page generation technique, then there is no need to remember the password. You simply generate it on your host and then hand over the public key to all the machines that you want to manage. So let's see how we can do that on Linux machine first and then we'll jump over to the uh, Windows environment. So for Linux, I'm going to use SSH and uh, then keygen, that's the key command and simply just press enter. It is saying that generate public private RSA key pair. I agree to it and it will be the public key will be placed in this. This is in fact the private key. Public key will also be placed over here with the extension of idrsa.pub. So I press enter and it says it already exists. I say that yes, write it and there is no passphrase needed. This passphrase, by the way, if you want to access your keys and you want to export it, then it would uh, require you to have the password. Uh, this is what we're saying that your public key has been saved in this. Now what I want to do is let's have a look at the contents of this key. SSH IDRSA uh, dot public. So this is the public key that it has generated. You want to copy this portion into your uh, Cisco router or switch. So come on to your Cisco router and over here type in IP SSH search and then public keychain. You see that the prompt has changed to SSH public key. Uh, I'm gonna generate this public key for username, uh, let's say test. And over here, I am going to give in the key string. By the way, this key string has a limit of 254 or 255 characters. Uh, this string is longer than that. So you can break it in two parts. For example, I uh, select this portion uh, of characters and I copy it and I simply uh, paste it here. And then I come on to I come onto this part and copy the rest of the characters and paste it here. Do nothing, just simply paste it and it will be taken as one complete string. Now once that is done, I exit from here, exit all the way and also what I would like to do is disable uh, password based authentication. So what I'm going to do is SSH or IP SSH. and then go into server then authentication user and uh, by default all these three options are enabled i'm gonna disable this keyboard and password based option so put in password and just do a no command so once that is done if i show you show ip SSH, we see that the authentication method right now is public key and keyboard interactive. So password based authentication is no more there. I can also disable this one as well if, you, if I do the no command, uh, just like we did over here. So once that part is done, now let's come on to our uh, host from where we are going to uh, try to access the, access the router and let's try to connect this using the same uh, string that we used earlier but this time uh, it should not ask for the password. You can simply uh, delete the password that is uh, earlier generated by typing in no username, uh, test and password. No need for password because it will delete the username in any case. So just have a look at the configuration. Uh, 
uh, we see that uh, that username has been removed. So now let's come on to our machine and let's try to SSH. Agent refuse the operation uh, it's because this is already in there. So what I can do is SSH add. Okay. Sometimes it gives the error because the agent, the SSH agent that is running on this machine, this host machine, it has already got the, or it doesn't have that uh, private key. So uh, by this SSH add, it has now added it and hopefully we should be able to access the router which we have. Okay, now let's see how we can do the same thing on Windows environment. Uh, but since we'll be generating uh, key for Windows, what we can do is that either we can remove the key which is associated with the this test user because it's hosted on a different machine uh, and we'll be generating a new key on, on a windows based machine so either we can delete this one or we can generate a new username so we'll create a new username all right so let's just remove uh, get out of here and uh, minimize this and come over here and uh, let me just pull up windows machine so here we are uh, there are many programs that you can use to telnet or SSH to different machines uh, and definitely there are many programs that you can use to generate uh, keys as well, uh, public private keys. Uh, but most of the uh, industry use program is PuTTY and the key that we can and the, gen and the program that we can use to generate the keys is uh, PuTTY Gen as it is known. You can easily download it, simply go to a search engine like Google and you can type in PuttyGen download and just go to the first link which is chr.greenend.org.uk of course there are many other links that you can use to download it uh, but let's just simply go to the first one and from here once it gets opened up we can simply download uh, the uh, version that is suitable for your environment if you are using 64 bit or 32 bit uh, so once the site is up uh, you can simply go to you can use the installer version as well uh, if you want to install it I prefer to use zip versions so this for SSH this is for secure copy this for secure FTP uh, for PuTTY which is used to connect to the clients you can use either of these version depending on what you want I am going to use 32 bit version because I am using Windows XP for this particular demonstration and it has generated some error let's see if we can download it it uh, save target as secure channel transfer this some issue with the download maybe we can try a different link uh, this seems to be a problem with the internet explorer browser so i've closed that one and i'm using uh, uh, this browser on my a Linux machine to download this client and then I will simply transfer it to the Windows machine. It does not really matter if you are using Windows, it will download. It's just that that particular Internet Explorer is not updated, so it is giving problems. So I'm going to download this one, uh, save it onto my desktop. And the other thing that we need to download is Putty Gen software, which is this one, and save it on the desktop or wherever you want to save it. So now I'm going to pause this video, I'm going to transfer these two files onto my Windows machine and then we'll go from there. Okay, so once you download both the files, uh, you will get like these, putty.exe and puttygen.exe. This is the file that we're going to use to generate the public private key pair. Uh, simply click on generate and the type of generation is that type of, type of algorithm that you're going to use is depending upon your requirement. I'm going to use RSA. Let's generate this one. It says that we keep on moving our cursor during this time so that a random, uh, more random uh, key can be generated. So let's just keep on moving here. And once that is done, you will see that we will show us the uh, public key here that again we will need to copy into the router just like we did in the case of Linux machine. Uh, so just hold on for a moment and once the process is completed. Okay, so we, here we are. It is saying that generate up this is this is again if you want to generate it i want to save the private key and uh, uh, if you want to again give a passphrase i do not want to give a passphrase so just save it as let's say test one on our desktop 
Here is the file that we will use to connect. Uh, this is our private key. And again, this is the public key. So just copy this one and uh, put it in Notepad maybe. Let me just come here and type in Notepad. Paste it and we'll wrap it. So this is the key that we're gonna use just like we did earlier. We're gonna use this one to uh, uh, to access the Cisco devices from Windows based machines. So let's pull up our topology and the console for the router. And in that, I'm gonna again type in IPSSH and public key chain. And this time I'm gonna use a different user, test1. And then I'm gonna type in the T string and then put in that key string that, we'll, that we have seen over there. So pull up that uh, window screen and from here, since again it's a longer key, I'm gonna make it in almost half. Let's say up to here, copy this one and paste it here. Up to KDK and then from KDK onward we copy this part. Copy it and paste it in the terminal. Press enter, exit, exit and exit. Now that part is done. We can simply close it. We don't need it anymore. And we can close the generator as well. Its function is fulfilled. Now we are going over to Putty. And over here in SSH, we are going to go to Auth. And over here, we are going to select the private key file that we exported earlier. So browse, test one, open it. And now I'm going to go to sessions. And from here, I'm going to give the IP address of our router that we're going to get, that we will be connecting to 192.168.1.1. Also the username I can mention here, test one, add sign. And uh, hopefully, once I do that, uh, we will be taken right into the into the uh, operation mode. So open. These are the keys that uh, we generated in the router, and it is giving us the public key. So accept it, and we are into the system. So I hope you found it informative. Uh, thank you for watching.